Hello, this is a step-by-step uh, -step tutorial on Grad 250 Advanced Page Layout Project 1. And this step-by-step -step will get you started on the project so that you can import files and text into a template that was provided for you. The course outcomes that this will meet will give you the ability to compile text into a book, an interactive document. You'll also be applying top or typographical and basic design skills to produce a project using page layout software and incorporate production skills into design projects utilizing industry standard software. So this was the project that was given to you. It's Grad 250 Advanced Page Layout, Project 1. It's a multi-purpose corporate sports brochure. And these are the setups of the, uh, like a layout that you could use um, that was provided in a template for you. And this was to design a brochure or booklet for a sports corporation. So. The example provided is for the Buffalo Sabres. Now, if you're a fan of the New York Yankees, you could replace the information, uh, including the New York Yankees, or say you have another sports team that you'd like to um, apply this to, you're more than welcome to change the topic of the information. You are under a time constraint, so you would have to produce this um, within the time frame of this project from week one and into week um, uh, two. So you don't have a lot of time to maybe do some research, but you're more than welcome to uh, change the topic if needed. So the directions give you information about fonts, um, typography, maybe some hints the readability, making things wildly different, um, and doing some research, uh, finding images, finding color. The template is provided. Um, I'm looking for thumbnails, conceptual designs or images in a layout, designs of an image and text in a layout, creativity of images and text, and folded neatly. Um, and turned in so that everyone has a copy as well as a critique. And you'll also be um, either giving them to your instructor or uploading them to Blackboard. So there's some stern, uh, firm, I should say, deadlines. Week one, you're checking everything out. Week two, you're proofing and you're turning your project in. There's also resources and references on how to create a brochure with Adobe InDesign step-by-step -step for non-designers, a good YouTube video. There's also um, corporate brochure designs, 25 inspiring examples, and a video on fonts to get your brochure and flyers noted um, and noticed. So we will begin. You should have downloaded some files um, a zipped file for this class called the corporate brochure. And in there is a PDF document. If you open up that PDF document, you'll notice that it'll have the complete layout of this whole project. You'll also be um, provided with the corporate brochure layout as the template where some of the images have been started for you. So we'll take a look at what this project will look like. Um, this is a, uh, a book that we'll flip through page by page. So the cover is the Buffalo Sabres are going through a 50th year anniversary. So that was included on the cover. The first page talks about the Buffalo Sabres history, um, you know, how they were placed into the National Hockey League Association, um, information about the owner, 
and a quote from the owner. Team Pagula is uh, owned by both Terry Pagula and Kim Pagula, and this is a little um, background about the two of them. And here they are, uh, the two of them. And the next page is Jack Eichel. The page here is a template that you'll place images in. I'd like you to keep this like triangular three image um, shape where you're finding the right image that will work. If you don't use these images, you get the idea of um, what you'd want to, to use for imagery. And then a, uh, a drop down box on the depth of the team. Here's a uh, an example of the Buffalo Sabre Alumni Association, the mission statement, a text wrap for this graphic, um, this circular graphic, and uh, a picture of um, some of the older Sabres that played on the team um, that are alumni, part of the French Connection. One of them is missing. Um, I need you to notice throughout this whole PDF that um, there's a drop shadow on all of these extra pieces here. So as we navigate through here, I'd like you to take note of that. Um, this is a quote from Dominic Hasek. Um, this one is a Sabres Players Charity. This one is the uh, Sabres play caller as well as some Sabres fans. Again, um, these corners were given a radial corner and have a nice drop shadow. Here's uh, the team owners again and some highlights about the team, some average ratings that went up and um, how they're the highest in the NHL. Or TV ratings. And here's some corporate information about what number they are, the team value, the owners, championship, year purchase, price paid, revenue, operating income, debt to value, players expenditure, gate receipts, win to player cost ratio, revenue per fan, metro area population, the coach, as well as the um, team captain in the team. And again, it's um, the, the 50th year anniversary is also included. On the back of this booklet um, would be the one Buffalo, the Pagula Sports and Entertainments owns the Buffalo Sabres, the Buffalo Bandits, and the Buffalo Bills. So they have this under one entity called the Pagula Sports and Entertainment. So that's generally what this book will look like. And we're going to go through and take a look at what you've been provided. So you've been provided with the cover. It's not linked, though. So you're going to have to link that up with the images that are have been provided. So these images in here are images and more of what you could utilize for this booklet. So you'll have to relink that in and um, you'll have some ideas of where the text placement might go. So this is a Buffalo Sabres image. Um, you'll have to relink this. So if I double click on this link, I'm going to want to find um, where this file is saved and go through and link this up to the correct uh, file. So you'll have to do that to the first couple um, files here. You'll have to find the link and the image um, of that, that page there of the uh, saver team. So you'll think that's it. You'll click on that and um, it'll say relink and it's found it and relinks so that you're okay. 
So this uh, template has type that's been added to it. This is called pre-flighting. So pre-flighting is important in um, page layout because if you're in a print area, uh, you can see that there's all these missing links. So these images will be deleted or they will be um, removed. Um, I'm using them for placement only. So this is what we would call um, poor position only. If you saw this um, in a mock-up, it would be write it, written as FPO, for position only. So we're not concerned about these particular links um, in here because this will all be updated. The text is missing fonts. So we don't have this avant-garde bold. So if you double click on this, this will take you exactly to where that font is located. It'll be your responsibility to pick a new type of font. And you'll see these errors go away as you update your booklet. So um, that's very important um, to do that. So we'll go through and link um, this picture. This picture's linked in. Here, you're going to want to open up the text for the project. And all the text for the project will open up. And here's all the text. So this is your American professional hockey team. We'll copy that. This will actually go into this text box. You might have to unlock some of these layers if any of them are locked. You can turn these on and off as needed. And this text will go in here. So that was a simple copy-paste. I'm going to want to change this. So I'm going to choose a nice Arial. And I'll choose Arial Bold. And this front page, uh, if we take a look at our purple brochure, um, if we take a look at what um, that page was supposed to hold, it was Buffalo Sabres history. I had that there. So we'll type that in. And this also will be in our Arial. And this will be a uh, headline. So we'll want to have that in a thicker font. So I would recommend an Arial Black. If these type if this type font is not in your um your uh, computer, then you're going to want to find a type of font and type that will that you'll be able to um, apply. You know, a, a thicker font for the for the title and a um, lower font for the uh, the text itself, the um, body text. So. In grabbing imagery or finding color, I'm going to simply um, utilize the same color that was given already. This, this blue will be a darker blue later on. But what will happen here is this, this will be our container to hold our text. And if I layer these um, up, above the rectangle. My text is on top. So these were reversed to white. Um, reversing font to white, you really have to have a strong font. 
So this is how it looks. I'm just going to zoom in. This is the finished, what a finished piece might look like. Um, the font style here that I used was Arial 13 bold italic. And this was 15. So if I go back here, this is Arial. Uh, and I'll just type that Arial in. Arial bold. I need Arial bold italic. 13 point. It's going to end up being gold. We're going to use the color picker later on to pick color. So the box's corners have to have a radius on them. So if I click on this box, there's a button here. It's a little yellow button. If you click to edit this, it'll actually edit the corners. That'll make all four corners have this little yellow button and if you just pull that in inward it'll give you this nice radial corner. So we'll pop that in as a radial. Um, my text if I do a command A and put that in yellow uh, I'm gonna try to make that yellow. Pull this down make all this fit in here. Um, if your type is not fitting, you'll end up with this uh, little box here. And that's what we call a type overflow. Um, so this, in this case, I think there's just an extra space in there. You want to backspace that. So if you get any of those strange errors, um, it's up to you to proof this project. So in advanced page layout, you are more in control of your type. Very important things. Um, paragraphs in here are not fun for a user to read. So we try to remove those. And if you go open up the paragraph, you go to Window, to Type and Tables, choose Paragraph. And that you can also find your character in there or press Command P or control T to find character, you want to uncheck this hyphenation. So watch what happens to this type here when I uncheck that. Now my type flows a little bit easier and we're giving our reader an easier time to read our information. So as a designer, it's very important that we um, provide our viewer with information that they can read in a meaningful way. So I have this overflow here. So once again, I have, I'm going to kind of do a command A. I need my uh, character box open. So I'm going to press command T. And I can work with my letting. Now, I don't want this pop down here as like an orphan or a widow. Text by itself is considered that. So I'm going to work these boxes to kind of work them until they flow correctly. So this flow part is kind of up to you on finding the correct look for your document. So you can see me just taking care of this. Um, it's about a five, you know, five to 10 minute process on every little piece here. And I haven't spent the time refining it yet. Uh, so you're gonna wanna really take your time to uh, go through all of these. And I just have to turn on that picture on the back and you can see this picture has got to be dragged to the bottom of this layer so this text pops out. Um, I'm going to choose a darker blue. We'll end up choosing a darker blue from the Sabres uh, jersey. This first picture, though, has been tinted 52%. 
So it's been tinted so that it'll be light in the background and your text will show up on front. Um, so it's a little trick that um, designers will use. So that's the basics of getting you started on um, project one. Remember, these are for position only for text and text overflow. Some of these you'll remove and some of these shapes you'll modify. So if I wanted to place a graphic in this shape like this, I would go to File to Place. And we're going to want to place it from the uh, project folder that you downloaded, the zipped folder. And your images should be in here. Um, so I believe it was this person. And you'll have to work with these images to get them to obviously fit to this particular size. So you'll have to work with the image within the image box. But you can see you keep this nice outline here. And it's just a little dynamic feature um, that I think adds a little flair to your, um, your graphic here. So you don't want to expand this too much. And you'll work with the fitting so that's a right click. Fit content proportionately. This is sort of going off the edge, so you might want to crop that in and, and fit that to work. So a couple different things you're going to have to use are the um, files provided, the text provided, and you'll we'll end up doing some color selection. There is one strange thing about this photograph here that I need you to realize in the PDF, this picture was flipped. So what I did is I just picked a graphic on here and I placed it over this, his jersey number. Um, it also has a Sabres logo facing the other way. Um, there's extra credit points if you go into Photoshop and flip this logo the right way. So that's a little uh, Easter egg for you to work on. Um, I didn't get the chance to do this. Um, I really should have. I could have did this a couple different ways, pull this out and just reflect the um, this graphic. So I'm giving that to you, the student, to come up with the, uh, the fix to, for that. And you can also take out that jersey code. I would never let this go out as a real job. Um, I just needed to add a little extra credit into the project. So that's what I did for, um, for you. Um, so you're going to end up taking these pictures. Um, how you pick color. We have a swatch panel. So we're going to want our swatches open. And you're going to actually create new swatches if it's not already in here for you. You'll end up selecting a darker blue. And then this blue is dragged into your swatches for that new blue color. So that's kind of how we as designers create color. If I pick a lighter blue in here, should be getting this changed here. I'm not sure why this is suddenly not changing. Sorry, I had the wrong, I needed the eyedropper tool. I apologize. So this should be picking these colors up. And you can see from my um, color selection here that these colors should be changing. You're going to actually add them to your swatches. And then they'll be built into your swatches. So you'll have the Sabres gold and the darker blue. And those will fill these boxes up. So I, that is what you'll be doing for swatches. 
and of course you'll have your instructor to help you with all of that. The drop shadows on these images are you clicking on these shapes, doing a right click, doing an effect, going to drop shadow. So the drop shadow on this particular piece was at 75% and 135 degree angle with the distance of 0 0.1375. And these X offset and Y offset actually just, if I check mark this preview, move the location of that drop shadow. So that'll give you an idea about drop shadowing. Um, and that's kind of where we're at with this particular project. The um, Sabres logo was saved as a PNG, so it came in as a JPEG and it was saved as a PNG to knock out that, that background. Um, if you wanted to um, do a tutorial or learn about how to drop out the background with this JPEG, um, I'm sure your instructor could show you that, taking that into Photoshop and um, creating a transparent background. So these are some images that you can use. Um, you're more than welcome to, again, change the topic or maybe find more contemporary pictures. Um, someday this might not be 50 years and you might wanna change this graphic. But this gives you a nice example for your portfolio to showcase that you can do a corporate brochure. So a corporate brochure is something that you would be given to a um, corporation and that would be delivered uh, to not, not the general public, but more of a sales um, booklet. So this is something that maybe the normal fan wouldn't see. So this information is comes from Forbes magazine and it's set up in a template for a screenshot. So that is what this is all about. And you will take some time, I hope, to create a nice looking um, project from the images provided as well as the text provided. And I hope you success in creating a nice uh, corporate brochure. When you're done with the project in week um, five or six, we'll actually be publishing this online. So I'll show you an example of that right now. This is a feature in Adobe InDesign 2020 where you click on the publish online and it'll actually um, publish a new document online. So this is how you would do an EPUB. You're gonna see more information about EPUB coming up throughout the class, but I'll give you a little um, preview of what you'll be coming up with. So this is slowly uploading to a location on the net and it'll actually publish online for us. And I can view the document. I can also share it on social media or email it. Um, this would be something if you were creating this for someone, you could um, immediately send that to them. So this is sort of an interactive project and you'll be doing a lesson later on on EPUB, but this is how you would navigate through this project. So now this is an electronic publication that you can send to um, different people and you can become an electronic um, publisher with that. In the print form, when you print this out in print form, and this actually, I'm sorry, has a link. You would have seen a URL and you'll, you'll find out more about that um, later on. I'm sorry that I didn't stop on that. When you go to print this, this will be your front cover and this will be your page two and three. It'll actually sort this out in print so you'll have this nice crossover. The crossover pieces don't work very well in an e-publisher 
So this piece was actually designed to be printed and then folded. This is an 11 by 17 document that you would print and then you'll have some white spaces left over. You'll actually, um, uh, you'll print this on 11 by 17 and then bind the edges with either stapler or a uh, tape, or you could reduce the size and um, put a fold in it. So you've got a couple of different ways to, to output this document. The best results are a larger piece of paper and that you're doing the bindery on the edge with staples and tape. And it makes for a nice um, portfolio booklet. The pictures are fairly sharp. In the EPUB, this something like this, this type of shape, may not look correct. So that's something to consider when you're doing e-publishing. But it looks great when you're printing. So these overlays, because this is the fold, um, has a unique shape to it. So that is my tutorial on project number one. I wish you a lot of success. And um, I'll see you or talk to you soon for project two. So I'm just going to name this, and if you have any questions, of course, communicate those questions with your um, instructor.